So good evening to everybody. It's uh, good to have everybody attending. Um, there's not a whole lot of housekeeping or updates to get out of the way. So I believe I'm just going to really just jump right into tonight's presentation. My name is Eric Huck. I'm a treasurer of PA Lime and I run the Harrisburg region. With us tonight is Bill Moore, who was on the board and runs our Pittsburgh Lime Support Group region. And we have with us Dr. Jody Deshore, PhD. I'd like to really just take a minute and give a little bit of background about not only the credentials and the experience, but also a little bit of what you're in store for this evening. Um, Dr. Jody Deshore is internationally recognized practitioner, author, researcher, and pioneer clinical herbalist. She is widely known for pioneering work in plant-based medicine for autism, Lyme disease, biotoxin illness, as well as chronic inflammatory response syndrome. Um, we had the pleasure to see Dr. DeShore speak about a year ago, and it really left an impression that the protocol that she uses really is the correct approach for a lot of people. So a little bit of background. She holds a PhD in integrative medicine. She's Shoemaker Certified Practitioner in Chronic Inflammatory Response Syndrome, board certified for integrative pediatrics, board certified and licensed doctor of occupational therapy in the neurology track, board certified holistic health practitioner, and a registered herbalist with the American Herbalist Guild. She has over 25 years of clinical actual experience. What endears her to our hearts is that she's a member of ILAG, International Lyme and Associated Diseases Society. She's been a Lyme literate uh, clinical practitioner for almost a decade now. So why this is all important is she specializes in all natural plant-based and individual genetic-based customized treatment options. So not only does she work a, and is founder of a clinic in the Marlboro, New Jersey area, but also Lancaster, Pennsylvania. So she has really worked to a point where she has dedicated herself to scientifically formulated plant-based treatment options. This is something that is a compounded apothecary formula, and it's really her BioNexus herbal line that's proprietary formulations. These are formulations, you may be aware of them, that are available to practitioners worldwide. And she has clients, my understanding patients, probably 50 countries in the United States. So what intrigues us is she's the recent author of a book, BioNexus Approach to Biotoxin Illness, a step-by-step -step guide to sustainable plant-based treatment options. So speaking from experience, um, having had Lyme disease and chronic illness for a decade, I know there's periods of time where I have to give my body a break I have to really go a more natural route. And this is a solution in those moments. And for a lot of people, really the final solution for them. So Dr. DeShore, I'm really very privileged and thank you for having you on board. So with that, allow me to turn it over. So housekeeping before I do. For those of you that have questions, use the questions and answer box on Zoomerang or on Zoom. Um, you also, if you're on Facebook Live, put your questions right there in Facebook. Bill Moore will gather all of the questions, all of the comments, and when Dr. DeShore is done with her presentation, he will then ask her the questions and the comments in the order of importance and volume and priority and that sort of thing. So with that housekeeping out of the way, Dr. DeShore, thank you again. Allow me to turn it over to you. Thank you, Eric and Bill, for having me here today. It was, um, it, it's my pleasure. I, I had such a wonderful time in Pittsburgh when I was there last. So I'm, I'm happy to be here today on Zoom. And it is uh, the last we looked at it, uh, Eric, it was uh, 73 countries and about 
29 states in in the United States and of course Canada as well. So it's it's been such a blessing that so many people are looking at all natural plant based options for treatment. So I'm going to share my screen now and start my PowerPoint. Um, Yep, that's the one. Okay. Is it visible? All good? Yes, good. Okay. It is, it's fine. All right, good. So today I'll be speaking about mold biotoxin illness, also known as chronic inflammatory response syndrome, plant-based options for treatment or management. Just a little something about myself, a uh, little information. I believe Eric already mentioned this. I always like to start with gratitude and love to all of my uh, mentors. And for this presentation, that would be, of course, Dr. Richie Shoemaker, Dr. McMahon, Stephen Buhner, uh, Dr. Charles Ray Jones, and Dr. Eugene Shippen. Okay. Let's jump right into it. So biotoxin illness or SIRS uh, involves that today's lecture is going to be about those that have a genetic predisposition in approximately 27% of the population. Actually, let me uh, add this, that many people with Lyme in my practice, and it's, it's also widely known that don't recover really well or have a, a lot of reactions, multiple chemical sensitivities, et cetera. It is usually because of underlying biotoxin illness or SIRS. So they may or may not have the, the SIRS genetic predisposition. They may have the multi-susceptible HLA-DR. So that is something uh, to keep in mind as, as we proceed to this. So uh, this presentation will apply to those patients as well. So what happens is in, in the 27% uh, of the population that are genetically predisposed, there is a defective antigen presentation mechanism, meaning that the innate immune system doesn't present these biotoxin antigens to the cellular immune system or the adaptive immune system for antibody production and subsequent elimination from the body. The innate immune system however, continues to be activated. It's stuck on repeat as a, so to speak, but in spite of this continuous stimulation from the innate immune system, the adaptive immune system never responds. Now, biotoxins are fat and water soluble. So there is a pretty wide distribution in the body. They are uh, absorbed through the uh, respiratory tract, the GI, mucosa, and skin as well. Now, this is a, a pretty complicated diagram. This is Dr. Shoemaker's biotoxin pathway. Now, what I have done for my book, um, as well as for this presentation today, I have broken this down for easy explanation into the uh, seven stages of biotoxin illness. So it, it'll be easier to explain one step at a time. Stage one is known as the biotoxin effects. Now, for those who are genetically susceptible, these biological toxins go to the toll-like receptors, and then they proceed to the dendritic cells, which are also known as the antigen-presenting uh, antigen cells. But what did I say in the beginning? That in the people who are susceptible, the antigen presentation is defective. So removal from the body does not take place. Stage two is, is where the cytokine storm comes into play. So the cytokine effects is increased cytokines and these high cytokine levels in the capillaries of the patient, they attract white blood cells, which in turn leads to restricted blood flow and lower oxygen levels in the patient. Uh, changes in laboratory values of vascular endothelial growth factor and, and human transforming growth factor beta-1 are also seen. Additionally, inflammation-related symptoms, which can look 
very similar to Lyme. You know why? Because uh, biotoxin illness or SIRS Lyme is also something that exists. So, so there isn't just SIRS water damage building or mold exposure. There's also SIRS Lyme because Lyme disease produces biological toxins. Um, so high levels of cytokines can produce flu-like symptoms, headaches, muscle aches, fatigue, unstable temperature, uh, difficulty concentrating, uh, other kinds of cognitive and brain fog type symptoms. Additionally, what happens is there are changes in the leptin receptor. There is increased leptin. Patients will uh, find themselves being susceptible to unexplained weight gain. I have patients that tell me, you know, I, I, I'm vegan. You know, I, I barely eat. I don't feel good. My gut is inflamed and I still keep gaining weight. You know, and I've done everything. I exercise every day. I, I try my best and I just cannot seem to lose weight. Forget that. I'm still gaining. So this is where um, the damage to the hypothalamus and the leptin receptor in the hypothalamus comes into play. So this is all because of cytokine effects or the cytokine storm that happens. Stage three is reduced vascular endothelial growth factor which leads to fatigue, muscle cramps, uh, and shortness of breath. Now, transforming growth factor beta-1, the changes in TGF beta-1 are closely related to regulatory T cells. And where do T reg cells come into play? They come into play mostly, most specifically, and most concerningly in our children that have PANS, PANDAS, Lyme disease type of issues. And um, that is an autoimmune condition, PANS, and Tregs are very important in regulating and modulating those autoimmune cells, the, uh, the, uh, the excessive T cells that uh, make the person uh, demonstrate signs and symptoms of um, um, PANS, PANDAS type issues, which is an autoimmune reaction against the cells in the basal ganglia of the brain. Stage four, we, here we see immune system effects. Now immune system effects, you will see high levels of complement activation. So that is why C4A and C3A are important markers for those um, uh, physicians who are running blood work. Additionally, Inflammation-related markers would be TGF-beta-1, MMP9, matrix metalloproteinase 9, IL-1B, PAI-1. Uh, and this is all concerning the delivery of inflammatory elements from the blood to the brain, to the nerve, to the muscle, to the lungs and joints. That is why this is known as a multi-system and a multi-symptom illness. When a patient is at stage five, this is where you see low melanocyte stimulating hormone. Melanocyte stimulating hormone, again, has something to do with inflammatory changes to the hypothalamus in the brain. This is where changes in the adrenal function, chronic pain, chronic sleep disturbance, and chronic gastrointestinal problems happen because of continued inflammation. Often there are um, false diagnoses of Crohn's colitis and IBS. Stage six is a very important stage. This is where we see uh, development of Marcon's. Marcon's is multiple antibiotic resistant coagulase negative staph. As the uh, melanocyte stimulating hormone lowers, the susceptibility to Marcon's increases. These are colonies of staph bacteria, Marcon staph bacteria, that are engulfed in biofilm, so they hide from the immune system, and they are present in mucous membranes. They have been isolated from deep sinus mucous membranes, as well as from the oral cavity. 
stage seven is where we start to see your endocrine system coming into play and hormonal imbalances happening. Uh, we see reduced sex hormones in, uh, uh, in boys and girls, boys and girls, um, we see high levels of estrogen. For boys, often estrogen is higher, uh, higher than testosterone levels. Um, in older men, once again, low testosterone levels and high estrogen levels can be seen. Uh, problems with menstruation, problems with puberty, early puberty, delayed puberty, as well as early uh, or delayed menopause are also seen depending on the age of the patient. Then there is reduced antidiuretic hormone, which leads to thirst, frequency of urination, and susceptibility to shocks, you know, static shocks, like when, when, when you touch a doorknob, you, you, you get excessive static shocks. Illness becomes prolonged. There is chronic pain, often strange pain, which, which has never been felt before. Uh, changes in the adrenal hormone levels, cortisol, ACTH levels. Uh, there's often a reversal of the sleep-wake cycle. Patients will, will feel suddenly energetic uh, after 9 p.m. Sleep disturbance, um, melanocyte-stimulating hormone contributes hugely to melatonin production, which is off track in patients with SIRS and a chronic sleep disturbance is seen. Gastrointestinal problems I, I already spoke about in the earlier slide. Now, let's look at Marcon's in detail. I've tried to explain this um, diagrammatically. So here we can see that one, two, three, and four are colonies of Marcon's. And uh, they are embedded in the polysaccharide mesh-like matrix of biofilm. They, uh, they release exotoxins. Let me see. It's hard to see the, the cursor on PDF, but uh, for those who can see, I'm at number one. So they release exotoxins A and B, which damage the alpha melanocyte stimulating hormone further. Remember, Marcons come into play because alpha MSH is low, and then they further come about and cleave alpha MSH, and that lowers it further. Uh, Marcons colonize and produce biofilm, as I mentioned. Oops, sorry. Uh, Marcons can cause differential gene activation in the host with low MSH. I don't place a whole lot of information on, um, you know, treating uh, methylation issues right at the very beginning. I find that that contributes to inflammation. So I, I prefer to wait and I see the best clinical outcomes that being educated about a patient's methylation, uh, especially MTHFR, CBS, SHMT, um, VDR, TAC and VDR BSM. These are the four that I, I like to look at just to be educated about uh, what's going on with the patient's genetics, but I don't address them at the, at the very beginning until the inflammation dies down, because there is differential gene activation. So just because you have mutation doesn't mean it's, it's active. So um, as you start treating the patient, um, as uh, detoxification capability reveals itself, uh, it becomes pretty obvious if uh, the CBS mutation is significant or not for, or you know, any other mutation for that matter, if it is significant or not. A skillful clinician can always discern that. Uh, number four, last but not the least, Marcon's release hemolysins, which will further increase the cytokine storm. Okay, now um, Formula One NSP is the uh, is a proprietary herbal formulation, which is approved by the surviving mold team. It, it actually, is the only uh, researched and approved treatment for Marcons that is available all over the world. It uh, is available by prescription in the United States with Hopkinton Compounding Pharmacy. Um, 
and they have several sister pharmacies in the US as well. So it's available by prescription. Uh, however, it is also available through Bionexus Apothecary to practitioners worldwide and um, 73 countries, uh, patients with mold exposure, their families, their children are being treated successfully with Formula One NSP. Uh, it's, it's a nasal spray and uh, you actually get the nasal uh, spray attachment with the bottle, it's just not shown here. This is a little bit about Bionexus Herbals. The, uh, the uh, Biodynamic Farm and Bionexus Apothecary is in uh, Lancaster, PA, Pennsylvania. Beautiful farm country, Lancaster. Now, this was the clinical study in vitro on Formula One that was done uh, by microbiology lab, Dr. Musto and his team. And what they found was um, they found a 97.4 to 99.2% inhibition of Marcons with Formula One NSP. And uh, additionally, biofilm was eradicated as well as uh, Candida. Now Candida or yeast mold was also tested and showed a high level of inhibition at 97.8%. This is the various countries and the various states in the US that um, Bionexus patients are located in. Okay, this is some uh, usage guidelines if there are any uh, practitioners watching. Um, now, currently, Bionexus herbals are only available to practitioners as well as compounding pharmacies. Uh, and your, you know, uh, MD or DO or whoever else is able to prescribe can order uh, Formula One NSP with muco adherent. You know, for some people uh, who uh, who actually would prefer to have the the treatment stay in the sinuses for a while or if it is for children, uh, it is available with and without muco adherent. Now with Bionexus apothecary, we don't use uh, an, any kind of muco adherence. All right, so these are some basic guidelines. Just to bring you up to date about the uh, brain changes that are seen in patients with SIRS. There is increased parenchyma, increased forebrain parenchyma has edema or swelling. Left amygdala, right forebrain, both the pallidums are statistically significant with increased parenchyma. There's decreased caudate nucleus, meaning there is shrinkage or atrophy. Additionally, atrophy of the uh, ventricles is seen. Is seen. Uh, clients demonstrate significant improvements when treated based on established principles of care. Now, this is both plant-based as well as the allopathic protocol. Uh, Eric mentioned my book. I, I, I discuss um, all of this in, in my book as well in uh, much more detail. This is very important for uh, those parents uh, and families with children with pants to understand that, as mentioned in the previous NeuroQuant slide, SIRS has a very strong basal ganglia connection, right? Some of the atrophy that's seen in the brain um, on brain MR and NeuroQuant is in the basal ganglia. And uh, research also shows that PANS, PANDAS issues, the autoimmunity involves the basal ganglia as well. So that is um, the conclusion is that PANS, a SIRS is a major trigger for PANS. Many parents will note that uh, uh, their kids with PANS will have major flare-ups if exposed to mold. Many children who went back after the COVID lockdown, you know, when they started school up again, many schools were closed. Uh, some of them did not upgrade their ventilation system, especially after um, uh, there was also damage from Hurricane Ida. Um, my farm was completely underwater, uh, many, many feet 
um, underwater because we are on, on the banks of a, a small uh, river. So uh, you guys are all in Pennsylvania right now, I'm assuming. So I'm sure you, you must, must have had a pretty heavy impact of Ida as well. So uh, many parents have reported when the kids went back to school, they saw flare-ups in the pans panda symptoms. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, a few weeks ago, Georgetown, as well as um, the dorms at Chapel Hill, North Carolina, they both were heavily impacted with the mold infestation at school. All right, to recap, right, uh, exposure to biotoxins. There is a systemic inflammatory response and there is a multi-system pathology. Uh, you have your respiratory, nervous, cardiovascular, your kidneys, musculoskeletal, gut, and eyes. All of these various systems can be involved. Okay, and chronic biotoxin exposure can lead to immune dysfunction, endocrine dysfunction and metabolic dysregulation. Welcome to the bark side, I couldn't resist, sorry. Uh, wisdom, from, uh, wisdom from the botanical re uh, realm. These are plant-based all natural protocol options. So natural and complementary modalities, it's important to, to, for the client to support goals for herbal remedies and nutritional support. So slow buildup in sensitive clients is important, especially those with mast cell activation issues, multiple chemical sensitivities. Some of the important points to address is clean environmental toxins. Um, look at allergies and uh, mast cell issues. Look at gut, especially motility and repair. Uh, herbs that can help modulate cytokines, reduce NF-kappa-beta are very helpful. Additionally, herbals that can reduce TNF-alpha, IL-6, ILB-1, and CEDRATE. Uh, of course, binding and promoting excretion of mycotoxins. And actually, all toxins, all biotoxins can be triggers for SIRS and biotoxin illness. So uh, prep the complex client for the wellness journey is the key to successful outcomes. You have to proceed slowly and work with your client to work at the client's pace. Harness the natural intelligence of the body to bring people into optimal health. The art and science of tuning the body into balance. Patients will often ask me, you know, uh, when will my symptoms disappear? And in what order, you know, my uh, most pressing symptom is visual fog, blurry eyes, you know, tunnel vision, uh, I get tinnitus. I just, I really want to get rid of that first. My answer is that we will provide the body with what it needs and the body usually decides what symptoms will, will dissipate first uh, because, you know, it's not allopathic medicine, right? Allopathic medicine, you can go in, oh, you have a headache. Here is uh, something to suppress the headache. This is not suppression medicine. This is... Um, trying to bring the body back into homeostasis by getting rid of underlying causes. This is the BioNexus approach. It is a seven step. I will highlight some of the steps further. I won't go into a lot of detail for time sensitivity purposes. Okay, so uh, for the best results, I, I many of you must have heard in, in my lectures, I speak about the full 360. It's important that either you or your practitioner uh, understand the full 360. So in, in, in my practice, I see very complex cases with uh, tick-borne infections, SIRS, mast cell activation, multiple chemical sensitivities, autism spectrum disorders, POTS, autonomic dysfunction, autoimmunity or PANS, PANDAS, uh, IBS, Crohn's, colitis. So often all of these in one patient. And often they are little autistic children. So, um, and again, you know, in all these different countries around the world, uh, you have to deal with, um, it's amazing actually, 
to work with people from different cultural backgrounds to respect you know cultural practices and preferences uh, to look at the various uh, uh, dietary options which can be presented like there are uh, some countries around the world where it is mostly impossible to find organic produce organic anything uh, just because it isn't Unless, unless you grow it yourself. Now, I, in, in uh, one country in Southeast Asia, I have um, so many patients and only one family that has enough land has actually, uh, um, uh, they also have a son on the spectrum with mold exposure and Lyme disease as well. And as, as the son is healing on the Bionexus protocol, I think the family has done a podcast with me as well. So uh, those of you interested, it is uh, Bionexus Health USA is the YouTube channel and uh, um, where you'll see parents are sharing their success stories. And uh, what this family has done, mom and dad are both physicians and they have actually started, uh, they have a large amount of land and they have started um, a, an, an organic CSA for several autism families in the community that live close by to them. So that's just so amazing. Um, my farm team, you know, my amazing farmer, his, uh, his partner, and um, all of my apothecary staff have, have provided support and guidance uh, for them to create a, a close to permaculture. Yes, so I, I've already discussed Formula One NSB, but Marcon's dental health, dental hygiene, and environmental vigilance is at, um, at the top of my list. Right. So step one, foundation protocol, minerals, magnesium, B vitamins, additional thiamine in those with, uh, mostly those with, with um, uh, appetite issues, as well as a, a lot of neurological symptoms. Uh, a good multivitamin, probiotics, organ support, uh, dietary modifications, and environmental cleanses. This um, PowerPoint is going to be available for review, I'm, I'm pretty sure. So I'm not gonna go into a whole lot of detail just so that I have time at the end for Q&A for you, right? So dietary modifications, gluten-free, low to no amylose, no processed foods, no glyphosate, organic pastured uh, meats, grass-fed, grass-fed and finished. No alcohol, no, no cigarettes, no added sugar. Uh, cigarettes as in uh, all different kinds uh, of tobacco. Local fresh organic fruits and vegetables, modified SCD diet, the modified SCD diet, I call it modified. I know there really isn't any such thing as modified because I modify it for my clients. Um, and some, some of the modifications are listed here on the slide. Let's go into uh, gastrointestinal support. You have to look at gastrointestinal health as well as metabolic support. So here are some of my strategies that I use um, with GI support. Now, as you can see, it is important to check methylation SNPs, but I'm not treating just yet, unless it is absolutely required. You know, you have a patient who plateaus and you have a patient who is having severe detox or severe intensification reactions. That is when you would explore uh, methylation and see if uh, we, we can facilitate the patient's detoxification. Next is um, organ support. So I have included uh, Bionexus apothecary proprietary herbal formulas in here, and I've also included several other of my favorite uh, supplements that I, uh, supplements and formulas from third party that I like to use in my practice. So for liver support, kidney support, lymphatic support, adrenal support, and nebulizer options. 
So um, drcircus.com talks about, um, I believe he has a lot of YouTube videos as well on the best use of nebulizers for magnesium, glutathione, iodine, colloidal silver. Um, in the UK, there is uh, Dr. Sarah Myhill, uh, one of my colleagues, you know, we've uh, spoken at several conferences in the UK together. She has uh, really good videos uh, on YouTube as well uh, regarding nebulizer use. That's Dr. Sarah Myhill in the UK. Some of my favorite uh, mycotoxin binders. So we are moving on to binders and collagogues. So we have mycotoxin binders, um, binders for xenobiotics. Formula 7 GDS is excellent for glyphosate detox. That's what I found, you know, um, we, we run labs for glyphosate levels and glyphosate levels um, respond really well to Formula 7. GDS is a glyphosate detox support. Heavy metals, have to be addressed and vaccine detox if needed. Now, uh, vaccine detox can uh, unfortunately apply to current pandemic circumstances as well for those who need it. Uh, but this uh, vaccine detox mostly applies to uh, children with autism and children with or without autism, but with pans pandas type issues that have a, a, a post vaccine flare up. Some tips for the home to make it and keep it non-toxic. There is a, a, a long list all the way from environmental cleansing to cooking to uh, your shower, lawn care, pest control, laundry, uh, new cars. Uh, one example comes to mind, um, seven-year-old child with uh, Lyme disease and mold exposure uh, leading to pans, uh, pans as well. His dad uh, decided to buy a new car and um, KJ likes, loves uh, to go for car rides. You know, he's, it, uh, it settles him down. So uh, dad, I don't, uh, by mistake, took him in the new car. I had discussed about VOCs and what have you, but by mistake, you know, took him in the new car Unfortunately, the car was also a Tesla, a brand new Tesla. Um, and KJ, within the two hours that he was in the car ride, this time he did not fall asleep. And in fact, he had trouble falling asleep for more than a couple hours at a time for the next three months. He ended up with a pants flare for three months straight, lost weight, uh, uh, regressed, with the numerous gains that, that he had with the BioNexus protocol. And unfortunately, this was a really hard way to, to understand the, the role of um, VOCs, volatile organic compounds that, that are emitted as uh, you know um, outgassing from new car, the new car smell. And of course, Tesla, extremely high EMFs as well. Uh, good news is that that KJ is was able to build up to his full herbal protocol. He, you know, he is um, uh, settling down, and he's doing much much better now. I think he he also started school, if I'm not mistaken. Um, all right, now uh, speaking of herbal therapy, anti-inflammatory herbs. I've listed them all the way from uh, curcumin, kudzu, motherwort, tulsi, ashwagandha. Uh, all the way to BioNexus Lung Support Blend. BTXD Blend is Biotoxin Detox Blend, Neurological Support Level 1 Blend, and Neurological Support Level 2 Blend. Uh, dental Health, we use Formula 5, Dental Health Protocol Extra Strength. Guna Cytokine Therapy is, uh, has been very useful to address both C4A as well as uh, TGF-beta and IL-10 issues. Uh, hemp oil is hit or miss. So uh, depending on the, the skill of the practitioner and the, the uh, patient's response. Now, I have uh, for biofilms, it's uh, we use NAC 
NAC, N-acetylcysteine, we use the uh, Bionexus BFX blend as well. I don't know why this won't disappear. I guess if I'm sharing, as long as I'm sharing, that thing will show. So again, the slides will, will be available if, if, if the bottom of the slide, you know, of um, any one slide gets cut off, right? Uh, my favorite herbals for mycoplasma and chlamydia are listed there, as well as uh, we also look at viruses, yeast, candida. We look at immune modulation and brain and nerve support. Uh, because many patients with SIRS also have underlying Lyme disease, not fully resolved. You know, I rarely find that Lyme disease is fully resolved in patients who are exposed to mold. It's usually the other way around, that, that uh, SIRS, due to mold exposure and inflammation, needs to be resolved first, and then, you know, the lingering symptoms of Lyme go into remission. Immune modulation, I absolutely do not recommend immune boosting. Once again, speaking of the pandemic circumstances, immune boosting in my patient population means, you know, many have autoimmune issues. Why would you want to boost the immune system further? Immune modulation is key. So um, I, we usually avoid um, aggressive uh, immune boosting in my patients, and we, we go for... Uh, immune modulatory doses of herbals, as well as herbs themselves that are immune modulating. You know, ashwagandha and tulsi, which is holy basil, are really amazing Ayurvedic herbs, which are broad spectrum for immune modulation. I also have a ISM blend, which is the immune system modulating blend. Okay, special circumstances with SIRS. I've, uh, as I mentioned, look out for autism with uh, tick-borne infections plus SIRS. Usually, there is also pans pandas issues involved. Um, it is important to educate yourself that Epstein-Barr and um, methylation connections are precautions, right? Be extra cautious when treating patients that have high Epstein-Barr numbers and also have uh, MTHFR, CBS, VDR, especially VDR issues in their, um, uh, in their genetic uh, testing, especially if you feel that those are expressing and are not just SNPs. Aroma taste upregulation, which causes estrogen dominance in some patients and herbs that are estrogenic. So be careful with that. EMF sensitivity, many of, uh, many of my patients have uh, a lot of EMF sensitivity to electromagnetic frequencies, um, cell phones, you know, uh, uh, radio frequencies, mast cell activation syndrome. Um, many patients also have multiple chemical sensitivities and mast cell activation. Uh, factors that may be responsible for slow recovery would be thyroid problems, oxidative stress, underlying parasites, comorbid infections like tick-borne infections, leaky gut, B6 deficiency, adrenal insufficiency, reduced vascular endothelial growth factor, <coughs> excuse me, folate and or B12 deficiency or anemia. Many children have folate receptor antibodies as well. Metabolic acidosis occurs, and again, it's uh, important to educate yourself about the uh, single nucleotide polymorphisms or SNPs in the methylation cycle. Okay. To treat the vasovagal response and mast cell activation MCS issues, some of the treatments that have been uh, helpful in my practice is emotional freedom technique, thought field therapy, microcurrent craniosacral, tomatis auditory program and transcendental meditation. Now, uh, I've already spoken about Bionexus herbals and apothecary. One, one important thing that I'd like to mention is we are, I think Eric mentioned the that it's a compounding apothecary, which is correct. Um, because of individual patient sensitivities, and sometimes they can be very high, 
uh, we are able to custom blend herbals uh, for patients depending on their uh, depending on their sensitivities. So the the strength of the herbal decoction is defined by the patient's uh, individual sensitivity. So we we are capable of doing that. Just uh, real briefly, these are some of the proprietary formulas that, uh, that I've created for uh, Bionexus herbals. This is the book that um, was mentioned earlier. This is my first book, and this is available on Amazon and bookstores everywhere. Now, keep in mind, this is not a self-help book. So uh, this is a book about biotoxin illness. And just like the title states, it's the Bionexus approach. So everything I've spoken about in, uh, uh, in today's PowerPoint, you will find all of that information in the book as well, as well as, uh, as, as, well as a lot of guidance on all these uh, seven steps of the Bionexus approach. And uh, you know, it is important that you and your practitioner work together because these are pretty, uh, not pretty, very complex illnesses. Um, Self-treatment is, is not advised. So it, it becomes difficult for most patients, you know, because there is brain fog involved, there's fatigue. So it's important to have a good practitioner in, uh, in your corner that can guide you. And there are many that are really good with, with herbs and plant-based uh, plant uh, treatment options. So um, please keep that in mind. These are my references. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this, but uh, I, I wanna share a couple more um, pages or documents if there are any practitioners watching uh, just so you have a little bit more information. So this is just one example of the uh, Bionexus uh, Lyme disease protocol, right? You know, all herbal, all plant-based. What we like to do, and this is a, obviously I speak about my practice because the patients I see are very, very sensitive or they are children you know, with PANS, PANDAS complications. So we go step by step. So we do, you know, tier one, um, then we go to level two. Okay, so level one, we have single herbs with one complex blend. Level two, we can get a little bit more aggressive and, and we can look at um, neurotransmitter and mood balancing. We can look at biofilm, we can look at cytokine modulating immune system modulating, then, then we have looking at the yeast and moles, and um, also looking at opportunistic parasitic infections. Next, level three usually is maintenance, and it's very easy. We just go with the formula four, daily OM, a hepatic support blend, and tick infection support blend. So, uh, you know, typically patients will stay on maintenance for about, um, for about a year. And at, at maintenance level, I usually see them approximately every six months or more. Uh, lastly, this one, this is the biotoxin illness um, protocol. Uh, so, my plan is to, right now it's, uh, you know, guidance and mentoring, et cetera, is available to practitioners worldwide. We have a mentoring group uh, forming for North America. Um, and of course, you know, it, it is at uh, uh, no cost at all, absolutely. I've, I've taken away all the, the fees associated for peer-to-peer -peer, uh, mentoring due to current pandemic circumstances, I think many and many people are gravitating towards natural options. And it, it is important that we, we open up uh, our information to, uh, to make it available to people worldwide. So I have um, approximately 30 to 40 practitioners mentoring with me currently from uh, abroad. 
um, and we, we keep adding more. And um, I'm, I'm still putting together the mentoring group for United States and North America. So I have uh, four or five practitioners that have signed up. So anyone who wishes to sign up, you know, um, you're a practitioner, you wish to sign up, you're more than welcome. I will be announcing it on my website when, uh, when the North America groups form. So keep a lookout. So this is again, you know, a very simple uh, protocol, easy to understand for the patient, for the practitioner. Now, these are some of the uh, complications that are seen. And of course, you know, the problems with solutions. Um, strep and staph blend is for complicated Marcons. The, the conventional option here is rifampin, which of course my patient population does not prefer. So we use, um, uh, I, I formulated the SNS blend. The TIS blend is a tick infection support blend. Um, Formula 2 essential oil support is for uh, using in, um, uh, what is that? Essential oil diffusers or atomizers. And uh, hepatic support blend is not for, for those who are on uh, conventional blood pressure medication. Then uh, there is also formula one NSB junior. This, can, this is a medical nebulizer option for uh, my patients that are two and a half years and younger. Two and a half years and older can use regular formula one nasal spray for Marcons. Okay. So you can see that this is um, a, a very detailed uh, protocol. And uh, once again, you know, um, I would like to say thank you to all of you. We have uh, quite, a, quite a few participants today. So, uh, you know, thank you for taking time out from your day to come and listen to me. I appreciate it very much. Thank you for having me today. Thanks for being here, Dr. Nashor. And we have questions starting to come in now. And if you have questions, uh, if you're on Zoom, you can use the Q&A uh, feature in Zoom, or you can leave a comment in Facebook. And I'll be monitoring uh, both places for questions. Uh, first question, someone wants to know, um, what kind of testing do you do uh, to, to come to a diagnosis? I guess that would be a diagnosis either for Lyme or for mold illness or for, for what have you, what kind of testing do you do? That will, uh, you know, I don't have a cookie cutter protocol. That is the one thing about me is uh, I will decide what tests need to be done at the first evaluation. That's what, so yes, you know, there are various um, uh, blood tests. Obviously I don't prescribe blood tests. So usually the referring uh, physician collaborates. And if there is no collaborating physician, we don't need blood work. We can certainly proceed with optional testing, which would be um, saliva, urine, nasal swab, stool testing, um, cheek swab, is often used as well. So there are uh, uh, different tests available for what I'm looking for. Then there are certain patient populations that are all tested out. You know, they're at the end of their budget. So we go with clinical monitoring for them because we are using, you know, uh, completely natural protocols. So uh, many patients prefer to go that way as well. Very good, thank you. Um, somebody's asking the question, if you mentioned a mold spray that's an herbal remedy, if the mold spray is an herbal remedy, why is a prescription required is the question. Correct, that is because um, physicians, MDs and DOs often request a muco adherent. Okay, so, um, and they also request, you know, slightly longer shelf lives. So Hopkinton compounding uh, includes organic uh, citric acid and they also have uh, organic muco adherent. So that is an option that many physicians request and that needs to come from 
a compounding pharmacy. And these are all clean sources because, you know, um, formula one is uh, wild crafted, organic, biodynamic, uh, whatever the highest quality of that specific ingredient is available is what is used. So the, uh, the integrity of the product is maintained, but for now in the United States, if, um, if you need any of those to be included in Formula One, that is where physicians uh, prescribe. It is also easier for physicians to refer their patients because many patients have compounding benefits through their insurance. So it, it helps with cost savings as well, you know, so that's, that those are a um, um, couple of reasons why. Very good. Um, I have a question about mold remediation. Um, mm -hmm. If a house has been remediated for mold, how long does the mold stay in the body? Let's say the patient was tested and positive for mold, and but the house was cleaned up. How long would it take with, with binders, et cetera, to get rid of that mold? Okay, this is a very broad question. Uh, usually, so if you are in a clean space, Okay, uh, hurts me is clear, you know, there is no actinobacteria, no, um, no additional VOCs in the environment. Say you're in an absolutely clean spot, you will definitely heal faster. How long does it take? It will depend on your comorbid conditions. You know, if you still have active Lyme, if you have uh, active co-infections, or you have... Uh, Lyme and co-infections that are still active, if you have autoimmune conditions, if you have endocrine problems, what is your age? How long was the exposure? What kind of brain damage uh, was seen on your brain MRI neuroquant? Uh, what, kind, what does it show in your labs? So again, it's a very broad question, um, but when can you start to feel better? What, I, what I've seen in my practice on average is once you build up to the full protocol, here's how it goes, right? First appointment, you know, I, I will assess um, what tests need to be run, et cetera, and we'll start you on the foundation protocol that I mentioned, uh, depending on your particular set of issues. Then you come back for lab review, then we further customize your, your protocol totally based on whatever shows up in your labs. Now, this super customized protocol, once you are able to build up to the full doses of the protocol, what I've seen is anywhere from two weeks to two months is when patients start to feel really better. It all depends on the various factors I mentioned earlier. So um, even children with autism and mold and Lyme and all of that, same thing applies within two weeks to two months. Uh, I've seen children, you know, with cognitive benefits, speech and communication benefits. Um, and with, uh, with uh, adult patients with SIRS, you know, you start to see the gut inflammation calm down, the weight loss stops, they start gaining weight. Uh, losing weight is usually comes towards the end. That's, that's very difficult. In my family, I was the one with the, with the weight gain issues. My son was the one with the weight loss issues. So um, for me, weight loss came at the very, very end when I was completely cleaned out. So no easy answers, I'm sorry. No, that's very good, thank you. I have a question. How do you ensure that your tinctures are mold free? Oh, of course, they are third party lab tested. And, uh, you know, the, uh, um, where the, the apothecary is a clean space, um, obviously with all the precautions, air purifiers, hurts me testing, what have you. And, you know, it's, it's an FDA approved facility and all of that. So yeah, that, that's, uh, this is how I hope that all the tincture manufacturers, you know, assure that there is no mold in the tinctures or any, any herbal formulations they make. There always needs to be third-party lab testing, you know, and certification, which is available uh, 
to show that, you know, it's mold free. It's not just mold free, you know, there are several other things which have to be tested before the formula can be, um, can be used for, um, for patients. Uh, all right, that, uh, let's see. Anybody else have questions? Uh, I got see plenty of time for some... questions, yeah. Are the formulas alcohol or glycerin based? If alcohol, what do you recommend for those who are sensitive? Okay, um, formulas and tinctures, anti, you know, anti-inflammatories and antimicrobials are not introduced until um, are are not introduced until your foundation protocol, the gut detoxification binders are addressed. So um, any mold literate practitioner wouldn't do that. It's not introduced right at the beginning. Now, uh, for those who have um, sensitivities, those sensitivities are very much lessened by the time we come to the anti-inflammatory and um, uh, antimicrobial sections. Now, uh, using glycerin-based formulas, I found that to be of very limited use early on in my practice. So I did have glycerin-based formulas, which most of them have been discontinued um, simply because not, you know, uh, many different brands I've tried glycerin-based and uh, my patient population, including my family, did not really um, get good, good robust clinical outcomes. So uh, tincture-based, even if we use homeopathic doses of the tincture, but uh, those uh, have given me the best results in my clinical practice. So that's, that's what I use mostly. All right, I have a question for you. Um, mm -hmm. I was a patient of Dr. Shoemaker a long time ago, probably 10, going 10 years back. Oh, Do you stay okay. in touch with Dr. Shoemaker? Have you spoken to him lately? Absolutely. I spoke at his conference just last week. I, I spoke about Formula One and, and, you know, all, all of the scientific research that has gone into it, all, um, all of my clinical data, I, I, I had a small study of um, 115 patients for clinical data of, of the Marcon's nasal spray. And we have a multi-center study going on, uh, you know, from a, a different clinical practice around the world. So yes, I... Uh, he, his endorsement and his uh, very kind words are on the, on the cover of my book. He participated in the virtual launch party of my book as well. So yes, yeah, I am in touch with him, yes. Um, and any specific questions you had, Bill? Uh, no, nothing specific. I was just wondering if he was still, still active in the in the mold fight, I guess that he is. So. Oh, absolutely. He has uh, recent published papers as well, you know, on, on actinos, uh, as well as the use of antifungals uh, that make marcons very difficult to eradicate, as well as the, the uh, brain damage and, and um, atrophy is also intensified. If there is... Um, use of antifungals, the azole antifungals. So th that paper has been published. Uh, then there was another one recent. Uh, and he's, he is uh, very actively involved. Unfortunately, he recently uh, lost his beloved wife, but, but he's, he's carrying on. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, I don't see any more questions. Something in the chat. Let's see. HBG Lime folks. Yeah, Eric uh, sent me some questions, which I already asked you. Oh, good. Okay. Those were questions that I got for some of the Harrisburg Lime members. Um, I have a question for you before we, you know, kind of close on what the next <laughs> session is going to be. I know that uh, my experience in trying to find remedies and information if you went maybe eight years ago, seven years ago to an ILADS conference, it really was based in pharmaceutical antibiotic, and it really had that anchoring in terms of remedies. 
And it sure seems like in the last two, three years, that community is, is loosening up. And it seems like, at least to me, more natural remedies are being presented. They're looking at a more integrated approach. I'm curious from your perspective, you know, as a clinician, what are you noticing when you go to Lyme conferences in terms of the balance of solution, the balance of information? What's your sense of it these days? It's it's a beautiful mix because we have uh, several ILADS members that are um, naturopathic physicians from from the Pacific Northwest, from um, Montana, um, Oregon, Washington State. Um, I, I know Montana is not Pacific Northwest, but but you know from from those areas, Wyoming. Uh, in fact, there are several shoemaker certified practitioners that are uh, naturopaths, functional um, um, nurse practitioners as well. So yes, there is a large, um, large number of practitioners that are leaning towards more and more naturopathic options. For me, it was because of the severe gut issues that my son developed uh, as a result of um, pharmaceuticals. But in the beginning, with his left leg paralyzed, only seven years old, in a wheelchair, excruciating pain, um, we, we took him to Dr. Trifoletti, Dr. Jones, absolutely amazing. And we had to use pharmaceuticals. We're trying to save his life pretty much. Um, but after that, I was really blessed to have met uh, Buner, Stephen Buner. His, his partner, Julie, has been uh, my mentor for many, many years. You know, she's, she's also uh, helped me with my son and helped me learn. So that, that's, that's how my interest developed. And I didn't really have much of a choice. I, I had to develop um, some alternatives for my son. And I'm like, all right, let's go buy a farm <laughs> and grow the herbs, uh, herbs ourselves. But, um, you know, it was uh, all those years ago, it seemed like a, 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 a crazy thing to attempt, but it's just worked out, you know, and not only for Brian, I mean, my, my son, but it's, it also worked. It worked really well for so many around the world. It's very interesting that in Europe and in UK, where herbal medicine is uh, far more elegantly received and regulated, uh, in fact, you know, they have a large body called as the General Nutritional uh, Council. They have the Association of Nutritional Practitioners. Uh, they have the, 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 the Royal Ecological Society. Um, and all of these uh, have, um, uh, most of them actually have uh, requested me to present uh, plant-based options for mold biotoxin illness. I, I will be speaking on autism and plant-based options, Bionexus approach, um, at another webinar coming up in, uh, in November. The, in, in the U.S., the National Association of uh, Nutritional practitioners uh, also recently requested a, a plant-based treatment option webinar. I have several MDs uh, from the UK that are in, in the mentorship group, osteopaths as well, who wish to learn about plant-based options. So it's been, um, it's been very well received, I must say. I would think so. I see the balance shifting as well. So very helpful. Um, we want to thank you very much. Very informative. As you suggested, we will have your slide deck available. Sure. We'll be putting this presentation up on the website in a couple of days and we'll make it available. So we appreciate your access and sharing the information. What I'd like to do also is I just want to introduce what is coming up next month uh, for our November virtual Lyme impact session. Uh, we are going to have Nicole Bell speak. Uh, it'll be November 16th. No, uh, Nicole is an engineer, 15-year degree. She's got a, an engineering degree from MIT. She's got a master's of science 
uh, in biomedical engineering from Duke University. So an executive professional, um, brilliant woman. Her husband um, hiking um, and then became ill um, after getting bit by a tick. And so she took it upon herself after a long period of time of caregiving to write a book. And so her book, I don't think is out yet. It's going to be out very soon. But the title is What Lurks in the Woods. Um, and what she wants to be talking about at our session next month is really not just for the patients lessons learned, but for the caregivers. Um, if you're a patient or maybe you're a parent of a child with Lyme or a spouse with Lyme, you know the drain and you know the challenges that are exerted on you and your time um, as a caregiver. And so her book, the chapters that I've read, very meaningful. We're really very pleased to have her. So be on the lookout for that. That's going to be November 16th uh, for our last virtual Lyme impact session of the year, we do take off uh, in the month of December. So with that, uh, thank you. Good night to everybody. Dr. DeShore, thank you again. Mr. Moore, okay. thank you for everything. And we'll talk to everybody soon. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Good night. Bye -bye.